Welcome back everybody to another rainy camp, Tony and Bruce, wherever Bruce is, he's behind me. And something different here, I've got the quad bike with me this time. I've got my big waterproof duffel bag on the front. And in here, I've got the tent, which is the North Face Storm Breaker 2. Now I did say I was gonna go up on the mountains to test this tent first, but I've injured my foot, so I can't get up the mountains for a, a couple of weeks. So I'm back in the pine forest. I'm gonna set it up just over here, beautiful spot. And uh, we'll see how we go with the North Face Storm Break 2 and a tarp. Let's get to it. Okay. Right, for this, I've got the <laughs> DD hammocks that I have much aligned three by three tarp, but it is heavy duty. So I do trust it for that. The rain isn't too bad. Fingers crossed, doesn't get that heavy. We've had massive gales. It's been pretty awful. Yeah. So it, the, the weather's definitely died off now. We've had huge rain as well. Hey, Brucey. Okay. Now I've already got paracord attached to this, but I want to use my new system. So I'm going to take, first of all, take all this paracord off. So I'm going to use my own special cord that I've wrapped and got carabiners on to hook it onto. I've shown this before, but let me show it again. So I've got these grips, if you can make that out, that you can then just pull like that. And I've got a carabiner at one end to hook to the top and then on the other end another carabiner so all you need to do in this case is wrap it around the tree and hook it back on itself and you can put multiple lengths of these on the top it works fine so i'm just going to go go with a simple three meter by three meter square uh, i just need to find the right spot and i want the root the Right, I'm gonna... So we're gonna go corner to corner. I'm putting the tarp up first so I can put the tent up underneath it in the dry. Because this tent cannot go. You can't install it, I think, well, you can't, I think you can't, with the inner first, which is a bit of a drag. Okay, so corner to corner. It's so simple with guys uh, using these carabiners and these hooks. <laughs> Is Brucey keeping you occupied? It's got a pine cone. Brucey loves pine cones. Don't you, Brucey? Hey, got a pine cone. Okay. Now I'm pretty sure these will be long enough. Let's give it a go and see. So you just tighten to where you want it. And it is that simple, you just pull the cord and you've got your tension. There you go, easy peasy. And it, you can pull these so tight. Basically all you're, you're really reliant on is how thick, how strong is the actual tarp. Let's just hope I've got this the right way around for how I want to do it. Should work, I might have to double one up. Let's check it out and see. Oh, 
Brucey's got the sneezers. Okay, we're looking good. That on. Pull it tight. All right, we're looking good. Just one more to go. Yeah, getting them, getting the uh, the the tarp super tight. It's so important in the rain because you don't want any pooling. So unless you want to have a really ugly pole sticking up in the middle of it, this is the best way to do it. Yeah, I might just need to turn this all round a bit, it's just a bit off. Bruce, you've got a pine cone in there as well. You're finding them everywhere. <laughs> I don't know if you can see Bruce lying down by the tree here. Bruce, bring it out here. Bring it out here. Come on, bring your pine cone. Good boy. Don't want to stand on you either. Right, I'll just temporarily hook this round, but I know it's not going to be right. Actually, that's, that's not bad. Okay. I probably need to just drop it at the front just to let it all pour down here. But that is Easy enough to do on this side, which I, I might need to drop them both down. Okay, let me drop this one down. I think we're going to need quite a drop. Drop this one down as well. How are we looking? Well, Bruce likes it. He's under it already. Yeah, this is going to be good. So I just need to lift the back up a bit more. You know what? Probably not all that much either. That looks good. That looks really good. Okay. So all the water should pool off down that side. The only thing with this tarp is you just can't, unless you use the guy, the uh, center line, 
unless you use the center bit here, you just can't get it taut. I don't know why that is. I'll be honest, it's not a great tarp. <laughs> I've said that many times. What I might do is just use a center line anyway. Got enough to go around. It's always a learning experience. I mean, getting the right setup with your tarp, it can take a while before you're happy. And then through the day, through the night, more it rains, you might even do it more. So what I want to do is I just want to, I tell you what, but looking at it like this, it will drop. It's going to pull just here. Because you just can't get this thing taut in the middle. It really isn't designed to do this. It's designed as a, uh, as a hammock. A hammock setup. So you've got to, you've got to get the center line taut on both ridge lines. So I'll do that. I'll hook them up, get the, get them tight. Cause there is a tree here. It will stop it flapping around too much as well. I think I've got six of these, yep. And just in case there are some gusts tonight, oh, actually I've got eight of these. Yeah, if there are gusts then, oh, it's good to get rid of that hood. Yeah, if there are gusts, then this will be even more secure. Won't it, Brucey? Yes, it will. It will, Dad. Roughly the same height, okay. Right, now watch this thing. Hopefully watch this tighten up in the center. All right. I think that looks pretty good. Even if there was a colossal amount of rain, it's gonna come off. It's, it's so taut. And in the middle, it's really taut. Yeah. Oh, that's much better. Perfect, all right. Let's clear the ground a bit. Make sure there's nothing sharp here. And we will get our tent set up. Yeah, you gotta try this guy system. It works brilliantly. I just ordered everything on Amazon. I'll put it I'll put it in the description what I ordered. Okay, let's get rid of any sticks and pine cones that Brucey keeps bringing over. Now, for a change, I've brought a ground sheet with me. The reason for that is it looks like quite a wimpy floor in this storm break. It doesn't look that great. I'm sure it's fine, but I just want a bit more protection. A bit of a guarantee. And then what I'll do is, the hill actually, it's gonna be deceiving on the camera, but the hill is actually, it's kind of going off that way. It's not even flowing down that way. So everything behind me tilts and then is going off down here. So I'm just gonna drag a channel uh, yeah, here to just send everything, any water that does come pouring down there, send it down here. But the beauty of this pine forest is it soaks everything pretty well. So you don't usually get any remnants of rain coming. Okay. Now, I was going to try and set this tent up outer first, but I just don't think that's going to work. Maybe another time I'll try it when it's not raining, just to be sure. Okay, let's get the tent. 
So yeah, I've got my 100% waterproof duffel bag that I got off Amazon as well, making Jeff rich. But yeah, this thing is for kayaking, that sort of stuff. It's huge. I think this is a 120, 110 liter pack and 100% waterproof. And it turns into a backpack, duffel bag, pretty phenomenal piece of kit. Right, let's get this tent set up. Okay, now the ground sheet that I've got here is for quite a big tent. Oh, I need this back far enough that I can sit out down here. Yeah, this is for the um, MSR Holler. It's a, big, it's a really big ground sheet. And there's just no way I'll need all of this. Yeah, so I might have to uh, fold it over on itself. Thanks, Brucey, for lying on it. I know, you're very helpful. Have I got that the right way up? Yeah. That should be big enough. Okay. So I want to, I don't want to, I don't care about completely covering the tent. I just want room to sit out the front. Yeah. And there's something, something quite unique about this tent. You'll see when I get it set up. Okay, first things first, the pegs that it comes with. Absolutely rubbish. Look at those. They look like they've come out of a 1970s scout tent. I will not be using those. I will be using my Hilberg stakes from my Anaris tent. They're basic. I don't know what you call these. Tent pegs. All right, here it is. North Face Storm Break 2. I have high hopes for this tent, for comfort and everything else. Now, one cheap thing. One thing, it does not come with a pole bag. This, <laughs> North Face is so cheap, honestly. No pole bag, rubbish pegs. What are they thinking? And the poles are not DAC. I don't know what they are. Some generic Chinese brand, I don't know. They're strong, but they're not DAC. So I don't know how much you can trust them. Okay, so you set the inner up first. Oh, and you know what? I've got that footprint, perfect size. Yeah. Okay. Pole number one. Now I have set this up once. set it up at home just to test it. You might have seen the photo I published about it. I do need to peg this out first. Shouldn't use your foot, by the way, to do that. Ideally, use a hammer or a rock or something. Because you can bend temp pegs very easily. No matter how good they are, they always bend if you hit a rock under them, you put all your body weight on. So just be careful. Don't force it. Okay, first pole. All right, second pole. So there's two long poles, two short poles. All 
I don't know if you guys can hear the sort of pitter patter of rain. All right. Now what I found was this did not want to stay up until you'd hooked it. There you go. See, that's pretty simple actually. I mean, I've put up some complicated tents and if you know my channel, you know I'm talking about Hilberg. Hilberg tents are so complex, bulletproof. But, oh my butt, they're, they're such a nightmare to put up. And that's it for the inner. It's up. Now, there are two more poles. My bad. And they just hook into a couple of end pieces up here. That's one. And that's what tightens the top up. There you go. All done. That's pretty easy for the inner. I've got to say, pretty easy. And while it's like this, let me show you how much room there is. CC. Brilliant doors. I really like these doors. And they they come they they both zip. So you can do it one-handed and they zip like that and they just tuck into a pocket there, don't they, Brucey? Yeah, plenty of room inside. Plenty of room. Yeah, seam sealed all the way across. Now, I have, I have sprayed this tent, which is why you can see sort of like a dark line. I've just sprayed the seams to be sure. I did not fancy having a fail. So yeah, it looks good. And we are, I'd say we're a long way under the tarp. So this isn't really gonna be much of a rain test for the tent uh, because it's covered by the tarp. But I've, I've checked out the, the tent and the outer looks completely waterproof. I've got no qualms about that whatsoever. Um, you see the water's dripping off the end quite nicely here. So it won't pull, it will come off. I could even lift that corner and make it a bit higher if necessary, but we'll see later. Very easy to adjust those straps. Okay, let's get the, uh... well, you know what? I don't even need the outer on it. It's completely covered, but this is a windy location. So I will put the outer on. All right, Brucey, we're gonna put the outer on. That's right, you can't go in there yet. No, because you're soaking wet and I have to towel dry you off. No, 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 Bruce, stay out of there. Good boy. Okay, now this is color coded. So you've got to line the red tab and there's a red tab at the back. So all I'm doing is putting the red tab under and then just connect the other tabs up. It's good that they color coded it. I wish they would do the same for the Wawona tent. Caught on something, okay. This is really thick, actually, the outer. Very solid material. I'd even be tempted to bring the whole tarp forward, let the tent get wet just as a test. But that means packing up a wet tent. And it's far nicer to pack up a dry tent, which is why we take the tarp. One of the reasons we take a tarp.
Okay, and all I'm doing is pulling, pulling these tabs tight. The tabs have uh, hooks in as well to be able to put a peg in if you wanted to. So you can have this set up without the inner. Okay, looking good. So what I was talking about with, with this is, you actually, you can guy the whole thing out, which I'll show you actually. Bruce is being very noisy. Okay, so what do I wanna do? I want to guy out this corner. In this corner. I don't know why they don't put elastic on there. Okay, so beauty of this tent is this. I don't think I've seen a tent with a door set up like this that's any good. So you see, look at that. And if you didn't have a tarp with you, I guess in theory you could have these set up on a couple of walking poles, but it wouldn't be very rainproof if you did. So I'm just gonna fold this up. You can fold it halfway, there's clips for it to go halfway, or you can go the whole way up. An elasticated clip at the top. Just like that. There's only one in the middle, so... Got to get your fold right, but there's just one here. Nowhere else. I'm assuming it would hold. So check it out. That's pretty cool, right? Plenty of room. So let me just do the back of it as well. And then for airflow, you really got to do the sides like that. Because you've got to let the air get up under there and circulate. Mind up, Brucey, I need to do right there. Now, I'm not going to bother guying this out because it just seems so sturdy. There are four guys on the four corners, but I just don't think it's worth it. Get it nice and taut. That's it. Now you do have to Velcro the inside to it as well. We do that. Wherever that is. Yeah, well, I thought there was a Velcro tab in here that you had to put on. Oh, there's one on this side, but not on the other. Okay. One Velcro tab, but that might be just for fusing the outer only. So this might be overkill. Yeah. So in summer, you could just use the outer uh, 
or the inner, either way. Yep. All right, we're looking good. Let me clear up the mess. Yeah, I mean, come on, North Face. What are these? Hey, what are you thinking? And no tent pole? Uh, no uh, pole bag? That's pretty cheap of you. Gotta say, pretty cheap. So what do you think? Looks good, huh? All right, let me get everything and get it all unpacked. Ooh, okay, I'm unpacked. Let me just get my table out, my one tigress table. Isn't that right, Brucey? Get my table out. Now, uh, Bruce out. No, no, don't go in there yet. He's desperate to go in the tent. Okay, now I did make an adjustment while I was uh, getting everything, and I've bought the tarp forward quite a bit, uh, about another mm, just over two feet. I just wanted to give myself a bit more room uh, to sit out in the rain, put stuff out, cooking, things like that. So, yeah, that's why I did that. Chair, crucial. You don't attempt anything without the chair. Oops, sorry. Oh, <laughs> sorry, Brucey. Did I get you? Oh, I scared. <laughs> Thank you, Brucey. Sorry. <laughs> oh, no. What am I doing, Bruce? Hey, what am I doing to you? Oh, that's it. He's gone in the tent. That's what he wanted. He wanted to go in the tent just to say, right, we're here now. Then he'll go out and play once I've settled in my chair. He's making that nice and wet. Thanks, Bruce. Okay. And the rain is coming down now. Okay, let's try that again. Perfect. Right, now I've actually got a bed for Bruce. Let me bring out his dog bed. You can lie on this. There you go, Brucey. It's your bed. Check it out. Oh. No, nope, he wants to stay in there. You're gonna lie on your bed. Here, Bruce, what's this? It's your bed. Go on, lie down on your bed. Good boy, there you go. Oh. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, hey Bruce. Oh, that was not too bad at all, not too shabby. I tell you, I've done this so many times. Sometimes it's exhausting. Setting up the car tent, that's exhausting. You know what I've just noticed is I've got some pooling in two spots. Here and here. Will it flow off? I might just wait and see what it does. You know, in hindsight, I should have put the ridge line the other way. But this is its strongest way, and I wanted that between the two trees for safety. This is pooling quite a bit here. Hmm. Might need to change the angle again. Right, let me fix this yet again. <sighs> okay, what do I need to do? Right, need to unhook this. Don't want Brucey to get soaking wet. I might have pulled these cords too tight. 
and they don't want to give up. Come on, that's it. Right. Where there's a will, there is a way. Sorry, Bruce. Yeah, just said I didn't want to get Brucey wet. And the first thing I did was get him wet. Wow, the back is really pooling. Right. And then this one's got to go a little bit over. So I've got a massive dip. I don't know if you can see it here. Because I just can't get enough tension at the back. Sort of going. I just might have to lift this up even higher. I've lowered it quite a bit now. Let's see how that does. It's looking better. It's draining off that side. So what I might do is just lift, lift the center up a bit and then lift the rear up a bit as well. I've got Bruce's bed wet. Sorry, Brucey. There you go. <laughs> oh, no. All right, I need to get out of this wet gear. That's what I need to do. I'll come back to you then. Oh, we're back and we're sorted. Ah, oh, now I can relax. Thank you, Brucey. You want to go on your bed? It's okay. I'm just going to chill for a minute. Thank you. Thank you for my kisses. Yeah, so... Whew. <laughs> I think after all that, I need a coffee. I don't know why you're so excited. It's your towel. I don't know why Bruce is so excited. It's like he can smell something. I don't know what he could possibly smell. There's nothing, absolutely nothing in here for you, Brucey. Oh. A bone for Brucey. What do you know? Hang on, Brucey. I'll open it for you. Hold on. <laughs> He's a happy chap. He is a happy chap. Okay. Actually, you know what? I'm even thinking I don't want a coffee. I might want a beer. Ah, Do I want a coffee or a beer? I want a beer, actually. Yeah, I need a beer. Let's do that instead. What have we got here? A Deep Creek Antivirus IPA. 7%. Bruce is going to have his bone. But I don't want you to eat that bone on your bed, Bruce, because you'll make a right mess. So we will get Bruce's bed. Just put it to the side. Okay. Here's your bone. Are you excited? <laughs> oh, now we're camping. As long as the wind stays away, not a problem. But what I like about this tent is you can tuck yourself right back here and stay well out of the way of the, um, of the rain, uh, of the wind. What have we got here? This is a veal clod bone. And it is well wrapped. It's 
So, from all your subscribers, for all the treats, and which I should say, thank you very much for all the treats uh, from everybody. I'll uh, try and put your names <laughs> up alongside me. Gentle. That's very gentle. Thank good boy. No, no, Bruce, not under the water. Brucey, you're, you're lying right under the edge of the water. Can you bring it over here? Bring it here, Bruce, come on. Oh, I'm gonna have to make him, hold on. Brucey, come over here, because you're lying right in the rain. Here, lie down, down, here. You can have it there, go on then. Have it there. Bruce, no, come bring it back here. I don't want you there. Come on, over here, Bruce. Bruce, here, bring it here. Good boy, lie down. Ah, 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 Bruce, come. Oh, that's, okay, that's all right, there. <laughs> I don't even know if you can see him. Let me check. He's hiding. Can you see him? No, you can't. Let me, uh, let me see if I can angle this a bit so you can see him. Uh, I'm getting wet now, just so you can see Bruce. <laughs> All right. There he is. Tell you what, we put it on widescreen. Now you can definitely see him. How's that? <laughs> uh, so we're... So all that rain that's dripping down in that corner there, that's, he was lying directly underneath it because he's crazy and he doesn't care about the rain. Whew. Yeah, I was gonna have coffee, but I suddenly felt like a beer. Maybe I'll have a coffee later. Yeah, so Deep Creek Antivirus IPA, 7%. Cheers, everybody. Thanks for coming along on this one. Sorry I couldn't do this one on the top of a mountain. But as I said, uh, I injured my foot. Um, but we are testing the tent now because I've brought the tarp forward so much that the back of the tent is getting wet, soaking wet. So I'll show you that later. But cheers, everyone. Oh, yes. That's good. That's really good. Wow, that's very nice. Okay, so let's get, um, I've got to put a bowl of water out for Brucey because there's no, no springs or anything around here. And he's gonna get thirsty after having that. There you go. So what can I tell you about this tent so far? Nothing, because I haven't slept in it, but there's tons of space. A fair bit of mesh, but not too bad, to be honest. Look how big this door is. I mean, the access is really good. It's coming down. Broken that bone in two already. I am nice and dry under here. Now, if the wind really whips up, which it might, it's coming from this direction. Uh, that would suck. And I don't have a wind break tarp. What I would do is then I would have to drop this side of the tarp right down to here, which would be fine. I could lift that side, drop this side, and that would block most of that wind. But I think I'll be all right for now. Yep. Also, I can just move more over here, away from that edge. Oh, cheers, everyone.
So I've had to move things around yet again. He's, he's right on the cusp of that drip of water that's coming off the tarp. Don't know if you can hear the rain, but it's pretty consistent. The wind has died down, luckily there was a bit of a breeze and it was just annoying me a bit. So I've moved the tarp over more that way towards where the wind was coming from, just to give me a bit more coverage from that. Cause it was just, I was just feeling it slightly. That's made all the difference really has. So I've bought the tarp this way a bit more. Um, back of the tent is now fully in the rain. So we'll see how waterproof that is. Um, everything's set up inside the tent. Got my Thermarest pad, got my sleeping bag. <laughs> There's no pooling, it's taut. You can hear how taut it is, the tarp. Uh, this is a nice setup, I'm happy with it. I am happy with it. So those of you who wanted me to test this, uh, this tent, it is getting rain. It's a shame I couldn't test it on the tops in the wind. Uh, yeah, so I injured my foot, couldn't get up there, but it is what it is. I will try and get out there as soon as possible. I have to heal, I have to recover properly. It's a long, long walk up with a lot of gear. <laughs> He's so funny. Oh. Now that I've moved this, I'm not feeling any spray at all, which is great. I just, yeah, the wind it drives me crazy. I mean, you could, to be honest, bring the whole tarp down even more. I could bring it down another foot and be absolutely fine. It would just be above my head, but I'd be even more waterproof. Uh, and I know I could really look out, it's still. Or you can set it up in a pyramid shape to block the corners, but I hate that. I've done that before. And it's felt so claustrophobic, it really has. So I'd rather not do that. Now, this DD Hammocks tarp is the same tarp that I whinged about for ages on another video. So I won't do it again because I've already whinged about it, but it leaks. Yeah. The corners, it leaks. I can see water dripping from the seams up here. Just the corner seams. I wouldn't want to be hammock, hammocking under this thing. No, every single corner grommet thing is, is leaking. Just as the rain picks up. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I don't know if you can make that out. You see that? That's one seam leaking. Uh, that one's okay. Hey, Brucey. Why is Brucey lying under the rain? This one is full of water. Look at that. That's full of water there. If I just stick my finger under there, you can see it. Here as well, look, it's leaking. That's soaking. Here too, look at that. Look at that. Every single seam. Every single one. I'm sure some, look at that. Look at it dripping out here. Look at that. It's pants, absolute pants this thing it's the seams they're just rubbish it's not the material it's definitely not the material it's this every single seam is leaking it's giving up now the only ones that aren't luckily I mean, look at this shoddy workmanship look at that this isn't the main center line seam is not leaking it's just all the tabs all of the connection points are leaking as I've said before, it's a crap tarp. I don't know, I just, I don't know why I bought it with me. But there you go. So there you go, you see? It's, it's, it's not a good quality item, this DD, DD tarp. 
Look at the water coming off the tarp there. Wow. This is a nice amount of rain. It's good to test the back of the tent. I've got to make sure that it's not going on my rain gear. It's okay. Yeah, it'll be a good test. It's a good job I kicked that, made that channel at the back as well, because the water will flow down that channel. It's directly under where the water is dripping off the tarp, off the tent. One thing I'll say about this tent is the mesh is very, very close to the outer. When I say close, I mean not even two inches, inch and a half at the closest point. Yeah inch and a half, very close to mess. Oh, that won't be a problem unless you push against the tent. Oh, now we're pooling. Pooling right here, see that? Sorry, Brucey, <laughs> sorry. And now why has it suddenly started pooling? I'm gonna have to do more work on it, aren't I? Oh, he doesn't care, lying out in the rain. He doesn't care at all. Uh, I think I just need to tighten this one up a bit. Oh, no, I need to tighten this top one up, that's why. Might tighten that up a bit more. Okay, that should do it. Ooh. Oh, I got wet. I got wet and Bruce is wet. We're both wet. Oh, Bruce, why do you like, oh, he's, why? <laughs> Can you see him? He, he's just, he doesn't care about gushing rain on his head. Couldn't care less. He's got a bone, he's dealing with the bone. The bone is gone. He doesn't care sticking his head in that at all. Look at that. Can you see that? All that water coming off? Let me zoom in a bit for you. Just show you that. It's draining quite nicely. Check it out. Hopefully you can see that. Zoom in even more, that's about it. Oh, you can see it. So, I wouldn't, yeah, this is quite heavy now. I just got wet doing that, but I'm dry under here for now. Let's hope this tarp holds up. Is it pooling anymore? No, that was it. It's flowing nicely now. That was all it took. And even if it did pool in that corner, I'm not that fussed. Eventually it would just spill over. It's, it's, it's if it's in the middle that it's a problem, but if it's on the edge, that's not a big problem. And that's flowing. Oh, no, it's pooling again. Oh man. There it goes, it's pooling. Can you see that? Just up there? Oh, it's constant. I need to lower that corner even more. And the wind has changed direction now, it's coming from that way. So that's the problem here. Wind is a big problem. Right, so I need to aim that down as much as possible. I'm gonna get wet now. Right, let's do this. Mind that, Brucey. You're gonna get wet.
Okay, what I'm gonna do is lower this all the way down to the bottom, just to play it safe. Okay, that should do it. I don't want to do that again. <laughs> oh, actually that works quite well. Oh man. Got to bring the camera in a bit. <laughs> Why aren't I car camping? Where's Bruce's tail? Here it is. Bruce's dog tail, this full monster. It's very good. Oh. Now he's just gonna stay out there because his bone is out there. But I've got, I've got his towel here. I'll dry him off if I have to. He's just gonna run around and play all the time anyway. That's better. <laughs> Why didn't I go car camping on this one? Whose silly idea was it to come up the mountain? Well, the hill. Up into the pines. Oh. I'll tell you what though. I do like this, I do like this setup. And I'm feeling quite comfortable about this tent. Certainly not worried about its capabilities. It's, it's a very well built tent with lots of good seams and everything else. And it was simple to put up. But here's the thing, it's not the lightest tent. I'll put how much it weighs in the description. Or maybe I'll, uh, I'll put how much it weighs just here. But it, it's heavier than my MSR my uh, Hubba Hubba NX2. But this might be more hard wearing. Um, the material seems to be thicker. So you never know. This might actually fare better in the wind. Can't tell here. <laughs> Brucey. I'll tell you what, putting the, the tarp down like that blocked a lot of the wind, which is nice. I can still see out. And Bruce is off. It's gone exploring. That's it. I don't know when I'll see him again. He's gone looking for goats or something. Oh, but you know what? I am gonna have a coffee with my beer. Because um, I just, I feel like a hot drink. Okay, I'm actually gonna have a hot chocolate. Got my, I've just lit the, uh, lit my Tranja burner down here. It's lightweight gear. I was gonna have a coffee, but um, no, hot chocolate. Can't go wrong with it, can you Brucey? Hey, you are a mess. Look how wet you are.
Thanks for coming, everybody. Ooh, nice hot chocolate. Now, I might try and see if Bruce will go back on his bed, but I really doubt it. He seems quite settled right there. I've tried to put him on his bed. Just don't want him in the rain. Let's try it. See how we go. Hey, Brucey, do you want to come on your bed? Great success. There we go. It's not much point drying him off. He's got, you know, as I, I've said this so many times, he's got a really thick waterproof, double layer waterproof coat doesn't get down to his fluff under here. I mean, that. look at that. You can't see that, but I'll try and crop in, but bone dry under there. Absolutely dry. Cooking with this, oh, it's so soft, fluffy. Anyway, that sits under this top coat and the water just beads off the top coat. So he, you know, he doesn't feel it at all. He's bred for this, easily. It's nowhere near cold enough for him. I don't know if the camera is picking up the rain, but it's coming down. And this is why, this is why you have a tarp. Yep. Wow, there's so many le I can't, it's difficult to uh, explain how much this tarp is leaking in all of the seams. All of them are leaking and dripping down. Every, now every single one of the corners, the tabs, are leaking now. Amazing. I, I don't know what they were thinking. You'd literally have to go around this entire tarp and seam seal all of the tabs, which they haven't done. It's such an awful tarp. Don't buy a DD tarp. Don't. Just don't. Not for rainy weather. It's such poor quality, it really is. I'm, uh, Aquaquest is very good quality. Flame, even Flames Creed from China is better quality than this. And it's treated with a DWR. All those types are treated with, uh, well, the, the Chinese one's definitely treated with DWR. So it just beads off constantly. Yeah, they're beautiful types. This thing is just leaking absolutely everywhere. On just the corners, obviously, just the corners, not in the middle. Luckily, this seam right down the middle is fine. So I'm not getting wet or anything. While I'm sitting here, just want to give a shout out and a thank you to Squarespace, uh, the sponsor of this video. If you uh, want a trial and a discount code, you can go to squarespace.com slash abcamping. Um, Squarespace are helping me build my website right now. And I've been pretty useless at it, I have to say, but they've been fantastic. And um, I'm hoping to get more features on there. I'm just trying to work out how to get merchandise on my website now. And I've just worked out how to do it. It's actually easier than I thought it would be. Uh, so with Squarespace, what you do is it's, it's a lot of templates 
and you just drag and drop. And if you want to add the merchandise like I'm trying to do right now, you just set up the link, you just click merchandise, set up the link, you drag and drop and you can see what you want to see. Um, the other cool thing about Squarespace is they take care of the hosting. So they host your website. But the coolest thing is I actually bought my domain name for AB Camping and Outdoors. I bought that through Squarespace and it just, of course, all hooks up. So you, you buy the domain through squarespace.com and then it sets up the connection to it. So if you're looking to build a website, you want the easiest solution possible, you want it hosted and you want your own custom domain, go to squarespace.com forward slash AB camping and you will not be disappointed. So thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. This is what we like. Rain camping. No wind, really no wind. Mild enough that you don't have to faff with having a fire. Fires are wonderful, but sometimes you just can't get, you can't have them. And here right now, even, you know, even though it's chucking with rain, in summer you can't have a fire here, it's banned. Brucey wants his dinner. I want my dinner. But I think it's dinner time. <laughs> Temperature has dropped. It's now about, well, I just checked. It said it was 10 degrees centigrade. Uh, so I'm not sure what that is in Fahrenheit. <laughs> but 10 degrees centigrade. Yeah, it's quite chilly. Considering it's meant to be the start of summer. But it's New Zealand, four seasons in one day. Right, I'm gonna put, give Bruce his dinner now. Which I'm sure will make him happy. Now he can't have what I'm having tonight. And also, I don't know if you've noticed, but <laughs> he's put on a little bit of weight and he's got to lose it, according to the vet. Go on then, Brucey. So, yeah, he's on a little diet. Bless him. I think somebody's been sneaking him treats. I won't name names. Okay, so for dinner. I'm going a bit simple tonight. Nothing complicated. Doing chicken schnitzel and just coleslaw. Nice and simple. Now I know usually I'd do something a little bit elaborate, but um, I saw this lovely uh, crumbed tenderloin and I just thought, oh yeah, I fancy that. And just a bit of coleslaw. Keep it nice and healthy. I'll tell you what, when you're car camping, You've got so much more space, it's so much easier. Oops.
Okay, I've got the Tranja non-stick fry pan. Pretty simple. I'm hoping I don't knock it over. <laughs> like I have done in the past with other frying pans. I'm gonna have to cut this. Yeah, it's so much easier. Car camping, isn't it, Brucey? God, you finished that already. Wow. It's gonna want some water now. Lights going. I know it never looks like it on the camera. Plus, there's a light on the camera. Which is probably why it doesn't look like it. But it is starting to go a bit. Gotta let that get get to bloom, let that get hot first. Ooh. Yeah, chilly. I've got my waterproof jacket on because I keep going back and forth to the camera and checking the tarp and stuff like that. But mainly because it's a it's the best wind layer. Wind can't cut through this, whereas my swan dry underneath, it cuts right through it. So I've been chilling for a while, just listening to the rain. I posted a picture on uh, my YouTube channel and on Instagram of the camp, <laughs> apologizing for not being up a mountain. Uh, for injuring my foot. But it is peaceful up here, I tell you. It is nice to be here. Yeah. I actually went in the tent and chilled out in there. So an observation, um, it's a drafty tent. Very drafty. So some mesh on some tents seems to sort of semi-block. He's back for his bone. It seems to block the draft. Like the um, the Hilberg tents. But this definitely is drafty. So this mesh just, it's its very, very fine, but it, it lets the breeze right through and it, it just rips through. So it, I mean, if I put the door all the way down, which I didn't, then obviously it would be a lot better, but it's such a big gap underneath that I doubt it would make a huge amount of difference. It would be, it, it would be a cold tent. I would not, uh, I wouldn't use this in the snow. No way. The other thing is that the gap underneath here is, is it's quite big. You can't put it down to the ground. So snow would just, it would get right in there. Yeah, and I don't think this gray layer, this thin gray layer, I don't think is waterproof. I might be wrong about that. It might be splash proof, but the fact that it's not seam sealed in the corners for the upper gray area, I, I doubt it. So yeah, I think if it was really, really howling, you'd probably be, you'd probably be okay in it. But if there was snow, no, no chance. It wouldn't be good enough. But I'm, it's a three season tent. I don't think they even, I don't know if they market it as a four season tent. I hope not, I haven't checked. But, you know, some of these companies, they do market themselves, especially the Chinese tents. They say, oh, it's four season, and you know it's not. Right. Hungry. So these are chicken tenderloins. Now I already put oil, I rubbed a coating of oil in this pan, so I'm hoping it'll be okay. Uh, I won't just burn instantly. <laughs> but, you know me, 
Anything could happen. It's sizzling a little bit, but not much. So he's had his dinner. Now he knows I'm cooking. He's lying there. He's lying there in the rain. He won't come out of the rain. Let's see if I can tempt him out of the rain with some water. Probably not. I think he found a puddle over there, so I don't think he cares. He's not easily bought, our Bruce. He really isn't. He's not, not stupid. You know what, I might have to um, have another beer. And I might have to put a little of this beer, a little bit of this beer, in with my chicken. So what have we got here? We've got a Deep Creek Brutiful Haze New England IPA. So it's a hazy IPA. And it is, hmm, I'll say somewhere how strong it is, but I can't see it anywhere. Wow, that's strange. They can't lift it off. Oh, there it is. Six and a half percent. It's a black can. It's a bit weird, isn't it? Cheers, everybody. Just to make me feel a bit colder. Mmm, that's nice. I'm gonna put a little bit in with my chicken. Because I've got a feeling that might make it a bit saucy, like casserole-y. Oh, it smells good. So it's sort of poaching the tenderloins rather than just frying them. Because I've put that beer in. It's gonna mix the flavors up a bit. Bit of ranch dressing or whatever this is. Southern dressing, I think it's called. Okay, looks like we're done. Now, what I wanna do is mix the schnitzel in with my southern sauce and bits and pieces. Take the crispy skin, put that all in here. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, now I might be able to give him, because there's nothing spicy in this mix at all, in the schnitzel mix, it's just, it's just sort of breadcrumbs. I'll give him one, one piece. He gets one piece. I'll cut this in half for him. Actually, I might be able to break this with my fingers. Ha, it's hot. Didn't think that through. It's definitely got to cool down before he can have any. That will be for him. 
is a treat. Oh, he heard the magic word. Oops. Wow. This is gonna be a feast. Mix all that sauce in. Oh, oh yeah. I don't feel too sorry for him, he has eaten. And he's had a lovely bone. Ooh, I know what he can have. That I've got for him. Which he does have to, it's a dental, I've got a dental thing for him, dental stick. So you can have that while I'm eating this. Because these are good for him. What do you think, Brucey? Do you want a dental stick? Sit. Gentle. Good boy. Look how gentle that was. Isn't he lovely? All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Let us see what we've got going on here. Southern coleslaw, the coleslaw sauce, and chicken tenderloins with schnitzel. Oh, I'm so surprised. Oh. Wow, I can't believe how good that is. He's taken his dental stick away. He's still going. He's still going. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Oh, wow. That is good. Oh. I didn't realize how hungry I was. Mm. <laughs> yeah. It's the combination of the um, southern salad sauce, or whatever it's called, southwest. And the actual schnitzel. Mmm. It's so much better than I thought it would be. I wonder if cooking it in my beer had any impact. <laughs> Maybe made it less dry. I don't know if you can see down there, Bruce's water bowl. That was a tiny bit in there, just a couple of minutes ago, just before I put the camera on. I put it there under the edge of the tarp, and I just realized it's completely full of water. That took no time. It's flowing down the, the paracord into there. Awesome. Mm. I should just make this myself, but it's so much easier to buy a packet. I'm all for less hassle. But I'm, I like a real dinner, real food. Not rehydrated. That's pretty boring camping to me. Boiling some water and rehydrating some food. 
bit of extra effort, just a little bit of extra effort, really not that much. A little bit of extra weight and you've got a meal. Proper meal. And cooking always tastes better when you're camping. coming back now. Hey Brucey, what did you have? Yes, there's two little pieces of chicken here for you. This one. Oops, so gentle. And there's the other. Can we see? Gentle. Come on then. He's so gentle. He's a lovely dog. He's looking to see if there's any of his bone left as well. He's had so many treats. Now, I get the occasional, why don't you get him a raincoat? He hates raincoats. Hates it. You can see how miserable he is in it. He gets wet, he shakes it all off, I towel him off, he's fine. He doesn't feel the cold like we do, he's fine. So, no, he's not gonna wear a raincoat. Hey, Brucey, is that nice? I'm gonna finish this. Come back to you for cigar time. All right, welcome back everybody. It is cigar time. <laughs> Bruce is desperately trying to find anything. Anything left over? It's pretty nippy now. Yeah. <laughs> He's happy. Monte Cristo number four. I'll tell you something interesting, but first I'm gonna have a little swig. I won't make you guess this time. It's the Kraken rum. Cheers everybody. Thanks so much for being me with, with me on this one. It's a grim one. It's grim. Cheers everyone. So, an interesting development with the supply chain crisis. 
that is going on right now. What are we, December, December 2021. Cuban cigars, almost impossible to get in bulk. I usually buy a box, buy the box, 25. Um, wow, this is the first time I've really struggled uh, to get a box uh, of Cuban cigars. I can't believe it. And the prices for individuals are just outrageous, if they even have them. Yeah. But I managed to get one box. Hopefully they won't take too long to come from the UK. Uh, in New Zealand, you really can't get them by the box. It's very difficult. You have to get them individually, very expensive, you know. So yeah, I have to get them from the UK. Um, but I just couldn't believe how difficult it was to get. No, I, I couldn't get any of my usual ones at all. And I'll tell you what I got when they arrive. But the supply chain crisis, crazy, crazy. I just couldn't find anything, anything, even uh, Dominican. Couldn't find a thing. Where are they all? Are they stored, helped on ships or something? It's just completely nuts. I don't know if you can see me okay. It's, it's getting dark. The camera does pick everything up pretty well, but let me put the light on anyway. There you go. Hopefully that doesn't trigger Brucey. <laughs> yeah, so this supply chain crisis, absolutely nuts. Great, I couldn't believe it, really couldn't. It doesn't seem to affect anything else. My son plays golf, Brandon, it's my son. Let's go, Brandon. Um, <laughs> he knows, he knows Brandon's name, that's triggered him. And he uh, can't get golf clubs, no. So he has to order them uh, from, if they're ordered here, they come from Australia and Australia gets them from the US and you just can't get them. So yeah, what other items? Uh, are any of you struggling to find anything because of the supply chain crisis? I have to say in the supermarket, everything is there. I haven't found any, you know, anything is missing at all. But some of these other things, and then if you want to order some furniture or anything like that, that's made overseas, months and months, huge delay, yeah. It's crazy. Amazing times, who'd have thought it? That it would be so difficult to get stuff, but I guess there are ships just backed up all over the place. So yeah, I'd be interested to know if anyone else is struggling with this supply chain crisis as well. It makes me worry that things like dog food might run out. Um, is that a possibility? I don't know. He's on a very specific Bruce, there's nothing on the tree. Stop it, come on. Since I've turned the light on, there's a little shadow. Bruce, no. He was lying under the fern and then I started talk. I put the camera on and started talking and that triggers him. I don't even know if you can see him. You probably can't. Oh, now you definitely can't. Because he's gone to hide under uh, this big fern tree here. Yeah, so I'm going to have to work out what dog food, where we get our dog food from, because he's on a very specific high protein working dog, dog food uh, for his, you know, health, well-being, coat, everything. I've got a feeling it's Australian. Most things here are Australian. Decent things. If you want to get good stuff, there's not much made locally just because it's such a small population. Population in New Zealand, is five million people. In a place that's bigger than the United Kingdom. Yeah. Five million people. We don't have a lot of people here. A lot of sheep, a lot of cows, a lot of pasture. 
and mountains and hobbits and orcs. I'm stuffed after that dinner. I've got a bit of a midnight snack for a bit later. My darling wife made me some delicious lemon drizzle cake, which is my favorite. Um, so what I'll do is I'll have that just before bed. Because then you, yeah, you, you sleep hot. It's great. Yeah. It heats you up immediately. You can see rain on the front here. It's just slightly blowing in. I hope you can pick up on this. I hope you can hear the rain on the tarp and I hope you get a sense of what it's like to be here right now. Bruce has got some bone left over there. Don't know if you can hear him chomping away at it. If I move the camera to get him in shot, he's then gonna move. It's, it's like he just knows. The second I get up, he's gonna trigger, so there's no point. You'll get, you'll get to see plenty of him later, especially in the tent when he's all curled up, soaking wet, wet dog in the tent, yuck. I was just reading some comments. And someone asked, uh, how did I injure my foot? Did I, was I going up the mountain when I injured it? No, I didn't. I think what I did, and I don't actually know 100% how I did it, but I'm fairly certain. So <laughs> I slipped at home on my stairs. I've got this polished wooden stairs and I was wearing socks and I went down them a bit too fast and <laughs> lost my footing. And I landed really badly on my backside. Bang, 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 bang down the steps. Poor Brucey, he came running down and lay next to me. Anyway, I think it was then. And I think what I did was I pulled the, the tendon just up by my ankle here. I've had it looked at. I uh, just got to keep icing it, and look. At, I've just got to look after it, not do anything stupid on it. Keep icing it. Give it a little bit of gentle work, you know, rotations and stuff like that. Uh, it's puffy. It's a bit bruised, um, but that happened just before I was going to go up the tops. I could do it. I could push through the pain, but I don't think that's a good idea. It really isn't. If you're gonna go up the tops, 
top of the mountains. You gotta be fit. You gotta be 100%, you gotta be right. Especially if I'm taking Bruce, I'm responsible for him. I'm not gonna put him through any unnecessary danger or risk. Um, I need to know that if something happens to him, uh, that I can carry him out as well. So, um, you know, let's say he gets a sprain or something like that. Okay, Bruce, settle. You're going to knock everything off my table. I know I'm saying your name a lot and it's exciting you. Can you lie down, Brucey? Can you lie down, please? Why do I bother? Yeah, so I need to know I can carry him out and I'm fit and able to do that, you know. Bruce, enough. Good boy. Um, which reminds me, I do, in my medical kit, I've got a little bit of medical stuff for him as well. So I've got bandage. I've got some painkillers uh, for dogs, for him specifically. And uh, some ointment for cuts and burns and things like that for dogs. Yeah. So you always want to have those sorts of things if you're taking your dog with you camping, just in case. Um, I mean, the worst thing that probably happened to him would be a, a major sprain or a ligament, a ligament injury. Then I'd have to carry him out. And it's, you know, when you're in the tops, that's three hours brutal walking. Um, he has been, and I've trained with him a lot to do this. I have put him on my shoulders with the backpack on. And he's fine now with that. Yeah, I bend down, pick him up, put him on my shoulders, and then walk with him. And when I've got a pack on, he can actually just lie straight on top of the pack. And it doesn't bother him. He's fine with that now. At first, it, was, it freaked him out. The reason I do that is in case uh, I have to do a river crossing with him and it's just too deep for him or too, too violent. And um, I need to get him across or something like that. Then I can just carry him across. Yeah. Because he's, you know, short legs. Whereas I can get through it. Again, only in an emergency. Okay, I am going to take my time with the rest of my cigar. Finish my lovely Kraken rum. Contemplate life. Contemplate the Formula One that I watched today, which was the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix, which Lewis Hamilton won. I'm looking forward to next weekend, the final race. Who knows, could be anyone's. Two fantastic drivers going for it. Everything to uh, winner takes all of the next race. Well, I couldn't be better. If you're a Formula One fan, you want it to be now biting all the way through. And yeah, probably the two best drivers out there. I'm looking forward to that. Right, I'm gonna finish this. Cigar in my rum. See you at bedtime. Oh, I've had scar. Rest of my rum. It's bedtime. Make an observation about this tent. Um, let's see. It is it is breezy, I have to say. But there's loads of room. I'm sort of lying at an angle here, but there is loads of room. Uh, it's, it's nice and taut, the interior, which I like. You can easily fit two people in here. Um, but for me and Bruce, there's tons of room. He's got oodles of room here. Even with my bed all the way up there, close to him. Um, because I'm lying at an angle because I'm on a bit of a slope. Um, these doors are fantastic. I've got the outside door half done up. There's a, a little loop there to hold it up. Um, the zips are useless on the outside door. Absolutely useless because they're catching on the storm flap, on the rain flap. Someone had commented about that, 
what a pain it was. And uh, yeah, they're really rubbish. I'm gonna have to find a way to fix that. I think it's the material is just catching. Uh, lots of hook points to hang things each corner and there's one at the top. There's no gear loft. A gear loft would have been quite nice. There's four big pockets, one in each corner. Uh, holds lots of stuff. And somebody is falling asleep already. He's tired himself out. Yeah, he's having a nice little snooze. He's snug. When he looks like that, that means he's toasty warm. Um, it's still raining, hasn't stopped. You can probably hear that. So that gray material there, I don't know if it's waterproof. Maybe splash proof. The lower dark side is the bathtub floor. That will be waterproof. But yeah, this gray material, I'd like to know what, what its resistance to water is. I reckon it's just windproof, that's it. So, yeah. Whereas in the MSR, that whole thing is waterproof, right up there. So I'd be interested to see. Um, not really many other observations. It's just a nice big tent. The quality is good. It, it is good, but it's not MSR good. I'd say MSR is better quality. You can see it's kind of rough around the edges here. Yeah, I'd rate the MSR better quality. And the Hilberg, another step above that even. Well, I'm all tucked in. I've got it, uh, this is a quilt, but I've got it done up as a sleeping bag because I'm a bit cold. The temperature keeps dropping and this is not a warm tent. If I was in the Hilberg, I would be boiling now because um, that's a four season tent. This is not, I've got my Thermarest pillow. This is a new addition on oh, this, I have to say, is very comfy. This Thermarest, and this is, I think this is the large size. Is it large or medium? Yeah, large or medium. And it's soft foam and it folds right up. Oh, very comfy. Oh, this is the most comfortable pillow I think I've ever had on one of these, except for my home pillow. So yeah. Unless something major happens in the middle of the night, I'll see you in the morning. Nothing major ever happens in the middle of the night except torrential rain and wind. And let's hope we don't have that. All right. Good night, everybody. See you in the morning. Maybe with sleepy head. He's fast asleep now. Okay. Good night, everybody. Morning, everyone. Morning, Brucey. Oh no. Morning. Morning. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, morning everyone. Oh no. I'm getting tea bagged. Bruce. <laughs> Look, come here. Brucey. Come here. Morning. Did you have no sleep? Yeah? Did you have no sleep? Oh, I know you did. Oh, you're warm, toasty, and dry. Right, let me let Brucey out. So he can go do his stuff. <laughs> it looks like an average morning. And it rained. It rained all night. Oh, and it was quite windy, but not too bad. But oh, it just rained all night, nonstop. I was toasty in my sleeping bag, in my quilt, my enlightened equipment. But this is a drafty tent. I know I had the door rolled up, but I would say even with the door down, it's still going to be a quite drafty. It's just a lot of mesh and this mesh doesn't block even the slightest breeze at all um whereas my msr that does so yeah i wouldn't use this in winter if i were 
unless you want a very cold experience. I don't know if North Face are planning to do a four season interior without all this mesh, but uh, I doubt it very much. But it, it's comfy, it's big. Yeah, it's a good space. Um, it, it's a little bit steep, this, this slope above your head. Whereas, again, in the MSR Hubba Hubba, it's vertical, so you don't hit your head on it. So if you're six foot, you are occasionally hitting your head or shoulder when you move. Other than that, it's all good. Uh, totally dry inside, bone dry, even though it chucked down in rain. All, I've checked all the seams, everywhere it's totally dry. Uh, no rain came in at all. So, this is thirsty. Yeah, I'm drinking. Oh, there he is. Okay, so, time to get up and have a cup of coffee, I think. Yeah. Coffee time. Good morning, Brucey. Uh, Bruce wants his breakfast. So he can have his breakfast while I have my coffee. You knew it was in here, didn't you? Good boy, go on then. Ah. <laughs> oh, it's chilly. It is chilly. I need to make a big observation about this tent. It gets the award for the absolute worst zips ever of any tent I've ever tested. The problem is the door. So I'll show you up close later, but there's a, a rain flap that comes over the door with the zip and it catches 100% of the time, no matter what you do. It's almost impossible to do this one handed. So if you're in the tent, and you're trying to get out, or you're trying to do it up, it's almost impossible without two hands. And even then, it will keep catching. Just keep catching, keep catching, keep catching. It's awful. I don't know. So basically, the rain flap that, they, that they've made to go over it is too thin and flimsy. So it just catches and just gets stuck in the zip every single time. Don't know. Crazy. And it's just started to rain which means I've got to put the cover on the camera. So I'll come straight back to you. Ah, that's better. I don't know if you're picking up the sound of the rain. Oh, it's carnage. Scene of the crime, empty bottles of beer. Bottles? Cans. No, Bruce, you really don't want this. Oof, you don't want that. Did you have a nice breakfast? Bet you did. Oh, I left my matches out in the chair. They might be damp. I have my lighter just in case. Moment of truth. It worked. Can you hear the rain? It had stopped quite a while ago. It's picked up just in time for me to have breakfast and pack up the tent.
boost just did a massive belch. So he must be content. He's absolutely destroyed his bone. There's nothing left of that. That was a good night. I enjoyed that. <laughs> that food was delicious. Had a couple of good beers. Good chit chat. Great cigar. And some lovely Kraken rum. And it wasn't too cold. It was chilly. It was chilly. It's, I'd say it's a bit milder now, but, um, but still, still a bit cold. <laughs> Tarp held up, except for all of the corners, of course, but it's dry underneath. So you can probably tell from the sort of the shininess of the tarp, the water where it's soaking wet, uh, it's not treated with anything. So it doesn't shed water. It just stays wet. Whereas a DWR treated tarp sheds water. The pro of that for this tarp is that you can collect rainwater off it and it's safe to have the rainwater. With a DWR tarp, you don't want to do that very often. Only if you've got no other option for water. See, that's all dripping straight into his water bowl. So, because it, sh it, because it doesn't shed water, it's really messy to put away, this tarp. Yeah, heavy. But hey ho, it's a fairly heavy duty tarp, I would say. It's certainly not light or small. So while we're waiting for the coffee, let me show you what I'm talking about with these zips. Let me go around the back of the tent just to show you with a different zip. So here you can see it. It's pegged out, soaking wet. So now you've got to assume you're inside, uh, which means you would pull this from the inside. So it catches first on the Velcro there, and there is nothing you can do about that. So if you're on the inside, what do you do? You've got to sort of somehow get your finger out, pull it off the Velcro. Okay, that's all fine. That works. Oh, and then you've got to close it. Oh, won't close. Try again, no, pull it up further, try again, no, it won't close. And look, see the rain strip? It's got caught in the zip. Look at that, and it is a nightmare to get it out, there. So you see how they've done this? It's really flimsy, crappy material with a sharp edge. And it's so tight up to the zip that it will just suck it in. So if you're inside, this is what's gonna happen. There, jammed again. Impossible, absolutely impossible. Jammed again. So if you're outside the tent, yeah, two hands, no problem. You fold it back and it'll be okay. But people don't do that. You won't do that from the inside of the tent. It's impossible. It only happens really if you're using one hand or if you're inside the tent trying to get out or trying to do it up. And last night, it, it took me ages to do it up. Uh, and then trying to get out this morning just to open that door was a nightmare, absolute nightmare. And I've got it done all the way up now. But yeah, it's this stupid rain flap thing. Absolute disaster. And I don't know if there's any way around it. I think if you stick, stick some duct tape underneath it, maybe, maybe that will sort it. Oh, so, as you saw, pointless. Worst zip ever. Isn't it, Brucey? Why are you lying over there? Why don't you come over here? Hey, eh? why don't you come and lie under the top? Hello. Why don't you go and lie under the top? Hmm? Hello. You've got wet already. <laughs> He's so funny. Look at all your water. Look, it's filling up.
Yeah, so, um, thank you, Brucey. I need to just talk to the camera a minute, but thank you. Come and lie down over there. Not my bowl. Leave my food alone. Thank you. Brucey, no, because this is, there's a fire here. Oh. He's probably gonna lie out in the rain with a stick. Or a bit of bone, yeah. I'm sure you can't see him. He's tucked down just there. So yeah, really pointless. Pointless zip. I think this is almost done. Wow. Just heard a branch snap in the distance. Fall off one of the old dead pine trees. There's, we've got quite a few dead standing pine trees here. And I, I, I've already checked above us, there's no widow makers here. Um, but over there, <laughs> something just went crash, bang, wallop. And Bruce has disappeared to go and investigate. He didn't like that. Yeah, so, yeah, everything else about the tent I like. Um, I think, though, I've got to give my honest opinion. As much as I like the tent, I don't think I would lug this thing up the top of a mountain. I'm glad I did the test of this tent here. There's a couple of reasons. And sorry to disappoint you, all you who've got the tent, it's probably perfect for you. But for me, this is a heavy tent for what it is. Um, I'll put the weight up somewhere. It's much heavier than my MSR, Hubba Hubba, which is also a fair weather tent. That's a three season tent. This is a three season tent. Um, that has DAC aluminium poles. They are superior quality poles. Already one of the ends came loose as I was uh, disassembling it first time. So you can tell the difference in quality of the poles. Uh, the stakes that, that comes with are useless. Okay, you can swap the stakes up. The stakes that come with the MSR are very good. Groundhogs. The zips. <sighs> Got to fix that. Uh, the mesh, the airflow through it. Great if it's hot. Um, but on a mountain, you rarely get great conditions, but you've got to plan for pretty poor conditions. And you don't get that cold draft in the MSR at all. It's got less mesh, um, and it's got side venting. So, yeah. I don't think condensation would be a problem in this tent just because it's lifted up so much. But it could be. It could be. But it's just heavy. For, for, what it, for what it does, it's heavy. For a three season tent, there's a lot of material here and it's thick, good material. Um, but I, I, I just wouldn't like that up the top of a mountain. I'd rather take my Una. And if you don't know what the Una is, you can look it up. It's a Hilberg Una. It's a, a one person, but basically one and a half person, four season, genuine four season tent. And I have had that thing in horrendous conditions in the snow, the rain. That tent, I would trust. The only problem with that tent is condensation. But it is warm. It is a warm tent. It's very light. It doesn't have a vestibule, which is a downside. But, um, yeah, you can overcome that. Just bring your gear into the tent. Uh, if it's wet, then bring a bin liner with you and chuck it all in the bin liner and keep it in the tent with you. There is room in the Una. And I camp in there with Brucey. <laughs> I 
Right, so while I've got my coffee, I think it's time to put breakfast on. I don't know why I just put that out. I'm not thinking. Clearly not thinking properly. That was silly, because now I've got to relight it. Yes, breakfast. You've had your breakfast, Brucey. Although you might be able to have some of mine. Not yet. Later. Bruce, away. No. Nice try, though. And oh, that's instantly gone into bloom. Great. What's for breakfast, Tony? I can hear all of you lovely viewers. Well, it's a pretty simple one this morning. I'm making bacon butties, or I should say one giant bacon butty, with some beautiful uh, local bacon. This is Manuka cured bacon from Pestles, my area, from my area. And this stuff is really nice. I get a lot of questions about what is that knife that you use? This is a Topps uh, Bob's knife, the, the Brothers of Bushcraft Fieldcraft knife. Serious piece of kit. Thoroughly recommend it. Uh, it does so many different things. I can't remember, I, I've reviewed it before. I think when I was doing my winter bushcraft up the tops, my winter camp, I think I reviewed it there. Super sharp. Very, very good knife. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll let that get up to temperature first. But I need a sip of coffee. Thanks for coming, everybody. Much appreciated. Oh, in case you're wondering, I'm having a flat white. A Nescafe flat white. It's actually very good. Surprised. Mmm. Okay. Bacon time. Well, the best way to do this <laughs> is just chuck it in and let it fall apart in there. Good sound. He won't leave my side now that he knows there's food. Let me zoom in a bit so you can see. You can see him, but you can't see me, and I'm sure you're fine with that. Some people asked me on that photo that I sent out, what's the red tag? That's his council identification tag. His license, dog license. You have to have dog licenses in New Zealand. I don't know what it's like everywhere else, but you do here. It's just on his collar. I don't know why I didn't bring my whole Trangia with me this time. I could have done, considering I'm on the quad bike. Would have been a lot easier, more stable. This is, it's okay, this, 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 this frame for the, the holder for the, the uh, alcohol, but it's not as stable as the whole Tranger stove set. If you're wondering what I'm talking about, you just have to look at one of my other videos where I've got it, older videos. 
I have been using this more recently. Just because when I got the top of the mountain or something, it's so light and it takes up so little room, whereas the, the main transier takes up so much room. But the advantage of that is it's totally windproof. You know what, I found that this thing is actually pretty good in the wind. A lot of heat does come out the side, admittedly. Oh, this bacon smells so good. pretty cold. I think it's about eight, nine degrees. It's definitely single digit centigrade. <laughs> this is the start of summer in New Zealand. Go figure. South Island of New Zealand. Anything can happen. It really can. North Island, I'm sure it's hot and muggy. But we've got a cold patch that's blown in. A southerly blown in from the Arctic, like a polar blast. Oh, it's good. Wow, look at these flames. That is really blooming. To stop that from happening, you could add a little bit of water. Yeah, just to stop it being quite so violent because otherwise you're burning fuel so fast. That's burning really fast now. So a bit of water in there actually would do, do the trick. It stops it sooting as well. I've seen more recently, more and more people using alcohol stoves, which is great. But I've seen them using them in the tent vestibule. Um, I've done that. I have done that. In fact, I did that a um, couple of trips going on the mountaintops in my Stiker. Uh, you've just got to be so, so careful. Because this stuff, it spills. If you knock it over, it spills and it's on fire. And if you're trapped in your vestibule, it's a pretty bad look. I mean, I was very careful with it. I didn't fill up completely, but um, I don't know that it's worth it. I think if you're gonna be cooking in your vestibule a lot, I mean, I hadn't planned on cooking in my vestibule. That was the thing, I always sit out. Uh, so it was a last resort kind of thing. It was snowing, it was grim. Um, it wasn't ideal. But if you're planning to cook in your vestibule, yeah, butane, you've got to take gas. I'd say that's the safest way to go. And a good sturdy base so it doesn't fall over. Like the, the legs that fold out uh, to hold the gas canister or something like that, especially if you're using a jet boil or something but I don't recommend these for inside the vestibule. Yeah. Even if it's soaking wet, the inside of your tent would not like that very much at all. They do have flame retardant in them, on them. There's usually a sign inside that says it's treated with flame retardant, but I don't know. You're gonna put that to the test with your brand new tent? So this is the Tranger firing pan and it's, it's non-stick and it's different to any other non-stick pan I've ever seen. It's sort of, it's got a very thick 
coating. I don't know what it is, but you can actually use metal on, metal tongs on it. It's bizarre. Um, and it's, it's textured. It's sort of, it's got these, it's ribbed for her pleasure. And it's a really thick coating. So it's a very good pan. I've never seen anyone else use this pan on YouTube, at least. They always use the one where you grasp the handle on and it fits in the Tranja set. This is a separate pan. Yeah, and it's very good, I have to say. I like the non-stick surface. I've cooked quite a few things in this now. I'll put a link to it in the description so you can find out where I got it. I got it direct from Tranja. I couldn't find it anywhere else. And when I say I got it direct from Tranja, I mean I got it direct from them in Sweden and sent it to New Zealand. You just can't get the, the stuff here. And you remember I was talking about the global supply, supply chain crisis last night. Yeah, this sort of stuff, it's really difficult to get. Everybody is out of parts. I was reading the other day that uh, in the US, there's actually a, an alcohol shortage, spirits. Not because they can't make the spirits and not even because they can't produce the bottles. It's the bottle caps. I read they couldn't get the bottle caps. They were all made overseas, China or somewhere. I don't know. And they couldn't get hold of them. So people were dumping product. Crazy. Imagine that. You can't get your Kentucky bourbon. And they were rationing it, limiting it, I think, to one or two bottles per person because they couldn't produce the bottles. They couldn't make the bottle caps. Crazy. He's grumbling. This bacon looks so good. Check it out. What a great sound. Oh, the smell is beautiful. Mm mm mm. Manuka smoked bacon. That's what I mean about the flame on that thing. Look at that. Bit of water we saw that. Using my one tigress table. This thing is amazing. I love this thing. So practical. It's a little bit on the heavy side, but it's fine. It's very good. Got all these notches to store spoons and cups and all sorts of things. Quad bike, that's what's going to get me home. It's about 10 minutes to get back. That's a beast. Laris, you see, it's got a winch and everything. Misty. Rain has died off again. Thank goodness for that. Great for breakfast. Didn't that bacon look good? <laughs> oh. You can't, he's lying right next to here, waiting for his little bonus. Tell you what, he's a thirsty boy. He keeps going to get more water. Right, this bacon is done. I might have another coffee, so what I'll do is I'll just get that to the boil. Bruce, can you, okay, you're too close to the fire. Come around, Bruce, come around, come around. Come and lie down. Wow, and the mist is rolling in. You can make that out behind me. We're in the clouds. And it's so pretty to look through the mist. Okay, Bacon Buddy, it's Butty, B-U-T-T-Y. Very simple. And I will just be having one. Nice bun. 
or BAP, whatever you want to call it, wherever you're from in the world. This is great for transferring these so they don't get pancaked. And that's right, I'm not having pancakes. Secret ingredient. I, I feel him on me. He's just... He's like, okay. Yeah, you put some in yours. Yeah, yeah. And then put one aside for me. Yeah, and I'm happy. Yeah, no, no, Dad, that's one. You can't have more than that. Oh, it's crispy. Crispy. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Now, he is getting a piece. Again, he's had his. Right, that will be his piece. Let's let it cool down. Secret ingredient to go on your bacon in a bacon butty is HP sauce. I guess in some countries you call it brown sauce. Here they call it brown sauce. Where I'm from in England, it's HP sauce, the original. And the HP is Houses of Parliament. That's right, it was designed for the useless politicians to have with their big fat fry ups. That's right. I don't know how useless they were back then, but I'll tell you what, chronically useless now, aren't they? Is anywhere doing okay? I don't know. I don't think it is. Everywhere seems to be a complete mess, even here in rainy New Zealand. We have a boil on. Oh. oh, I can't eat it while he's staring at me like that. I've got to give him his. What, are you kidding me? I'm going to get something? You knew you were going to get something. Wait. Are you licking your lips? You're such a good boy. Go on then. Bon appétit, everybody. Bon appétit. I've got to show you this. <laughs> Look at that. The brown sauce in there. Oh, my, my, my. I am suddenly a very happy guy. Mmm. <sighs> Crispy. So good. Pause the video. Go and make yourself a bacon sandwich. Use anything. anything. Sliced bread, bun, whatever. Tomato ketchup. Pause it. Go and get the bacon out. Cook one up. Get it all ready and come back and start watching this. Awesome. Wow. This bacon is delicious. If you're in New Zealand, Pestles. It's from Marlborough, where I live. Beautiful bacon, beautiful. I know the guys, know where they make it. It's great stuff.
he's, he's had plenty. I'm sure I'll get a comment from someone. Feed your dog more, give him more, give it all to him. <laughs> so I'm happy. I'll tell you what, a fire would be lovely, it really would. But as I said, it's illegal at this time of year. In this area, this whole area where I live. Do you know how many um, campers, stupid, careless campers, have caused horrendous damage, forest fires, because they wanted to have a campfire and just didn't plan, prepare, anything like that. In bone dry conditions, embers flying. I don't know. I see these horrific forest fires in America. And so many times they're started by people camping. And you just think to yourself, oh, what's going through your mind? What is going through your mind? I don't know. Do you go to prison for it there? I don't know. No idea, but forest fires are horrible. They really are it's incredible. And, and firemen's lives, it's, it's horrendous. Being put, you know, at risk. And a fireman usually dies in one of these events. These flash fires, they're horrendous. What do you call it when it's a tornado? A funnel with a fire. Well, I'm sure someone will write it in the comments, but where you see the wind take the fire up and the speed of it, and it's just insane. Yeah. Mm. Right. <laughs> I'm so happy. I'm going to finish this, have my coffee. Oh, you know what? Actually, why that's hot. I'm going to make myself a cowboy coffee. I've done this so many times in my videos. You basically you just take your coffee grinds. You don't want them to, to be too smooth. You've got your hot water. That freshly boiled like this. Put your coffee grinds in. Let them soak. You can bring it back to the boil. Uh, which I might do in this case actually. Because uh, that will extract some of the acid out and strip it out when you do that. Gosh, that's gasified already. That took off. So I'll let that come back to the boil, then turn it straight off the boil. Leave it for five minutes. Sprinkle cold water on. All the grinds will drop to the bottom, then you've got your coffee. <laughs> Come back to them. Oh, that was good. Polished it off. Um, right, that's boiled. Okay, you're done. The Bruce show. I know he lets me come along for the ride. We should have called him Nunu. The vacuum cleaner from the Teletubbies. 
Right, so what I want to do is, that has sat and seeped in there for quite a bit now. I'm just going to pour some cold water in. Just sort of sprinkles on the top. What that will do is make all of that coffee, those coffee grounds sink to the bottom. And then I can pour out clear coffee. And it's so hot that it only brings the temperature down a little bit. And you don't drink boiling hot. Well, I don't. Oh, that was a delicious breakfast. Oh. I hate beanies. Oh, but sometimes, but now that I've eaten, I feel really warm. have dropped something and his incredible nose I'm surprised he hasn't gone down onto all fours and just crawl, crawled all the way under me oh, he's done with me now that's it I've got enough out of my human I'm off great he's gone over there to Pee on a tree. <laughs> oh, he's a oh, he's coming back. He is a character, I tell you. Right, time to pour my coffee. So let's see if you can see this in the camera, how clear this is when I pour it out. I don't know if you can make that out, but there's no grinds coming out at all. Absolutely clear. That could have been completely futile. I have no idea if you could see anything there. Ah. I'm happy. I know what you really want to do is you really want to see Bruce. So I will fix that. And there you have him. No, hello. It's okay, you can go. When I click, he thinks I'm telling him to come to me. But he's going to be busy checking out the pans and stuff anyway. Some of you may have noticed I'm wearing a new jacket I'm trialing out. Instead of my usual Hunter's Element Halo jacket, this is Stony Creek Stow It jacket. It's the equivalent, it's their version of it. I think they actually came out with this first. It's a bit lighter green. So far, I like it. Yeah. Yeah. There's not much difference between them, really. This one's just got a big chest pocket, a front pocket, sorry. Um, over your abs, whereas the uh, Hunter's Element one has a pocket up here. I don't know which I prefer. I think actually I prefer the Hunter's Element one, some ways, just because the chest pocket here is perfect to put your phone in. Yeah, so if you're on the lookout for a new jacket, either of them are fine. They're very, very lightweight, 100% waterproof, 100% windproof. Why has he come over there? Why has he? walked right up to the camera. I have no idea what is going through his mind. I moved it there so you could see him. But honestly, he's, he moves around so much. You can't see him. I'm gonna bring it back. Oh, happy days. Now, what I'm not gonna be happy about is packing up all this wet gear. And then I've got to unpack it at home and dry it all out. Bruce's blanket is soaked. Yeah, everything's wet, everything's messy. And my wife will not be happy about any of that. Hey ho. Mm. 
as much as I like a flat white coffee, I do love a good quality black coffee. I'm still using this coffee from a subscriber, Lena. I can't remember where it's from, Sweden, Finland, somewhere in Scandinavia. It's very nice coffee. I was watching a little bit of YouTube last night. Some other characters that I've started watching, um, that I've probably mentioned before. I watch a bit of uh, Paul Messner in the UK. Very nice guy, yeah. Does very simple camping vids, very, it explains a lot, good stuff. A bit of Mav, M-A-V. He does uh, mainly truck camping stuff, but his older stuff is really interesting. Ice fishing and things like that. So I thoroughly enjoy that. Um, what else have I started watching recently? A little bit of Kent Survival from the UK as well. Not bad. I like that. Yeah, so many good channels out there. Um, I'm trying to think of uh, if there are any others that, apart from the usual suspects of, you know, Joe Robinette, Corporal's Corner, and Steve, Steve Wallace, hunkering down. I'm trying to think if there's any, any others that I watch much of. Not really. I have seen some other channels lately. One or two videos. I saw one where a guy took his dog up into a major storm in the UK. At first I thought it was quite entertaining, quite cool, but then it just got me thinking how careless and reckless it was. And the slightest thing had gone wrong. Could have been in serious trouble. So I stopped watching that. I don't like the reckless stuff where clearly there's no backup plan. Well, yeah. going up into a major storm with inferior gear, like a three season tent that's not designed for hurricane force winds. No. Might look good on YouTube, get the views. And if you're by yourself and you wanna take that risk, fine, but to put your dog through that risk as well. No, you've seen the amount of gear I lug up, tops to the tops of mountains, 15, 1700 meters, 2000 meters high. And I take tons of gear, mainly because of him. If it was just me, I wouldn't have to take half as much gear. But um, no, he doesn't have a choice, you see, so I don't see why he should have to suffer. And if anything happens, I need to know he's okay. So when I see someone else do that sort of stuff and they haven't really thought it through properly, then no, I'm not gonna watch that kind of stuff. Mav, on the other hand, I find him hilarious. He seems like a genuinely good kid. He's young. Um, I see he's just bought a house. Uh, I'm assuming because of how well he's done on YouTube, which is amazing. Yeah, kudos to him. I'll tell you what I did watch the other day was Mr. Beast and his Squid Game video. Oh my God. That was epic. I have to say, I watched the whole thing. That was a very good video. I think he said it cost three and a half million US to make. That was, I, could, I could believe that. But that was an epic video. So if you haven't seen that yet and you like Squid Games, watch Mr. Beast's Squid Game video. That was very cool. Well, look, it's, I'm very curious as to why I have to point out. I don't know if anyone else noticed. Maybe it was just me. In his video, number 456, who is the star, is actually an Asian guy. I'm sure that was a complete coincidence, but it is an Asian guy. But on the thumbnail, 456 is a Caucasian guy. Not Asian. It's not the guy, same guy. Is that just a politically correct thumbnail? Did they do that deliberately? 
was, did they think, oh no, if we put an Asian guy in 456 on the thumbnail, someone might say we're being racist. I don't know. Honestly, don't know. But have a look at that. Watch that and see the difference. The thumbnail shows a Caucasian guy, white guy, and clearly it's not because the, in the video, it's, it's an Asian guy who almost wins it. But that was a good video. And I saw Corporal's Corner, he started doing some more mainstream stuff now, which I absolutely love. You can't all go out there and just do bushcrafting all the time. Hardcore, chopping stuff down. You just can't. And maybe that's why his views have dropped a bit, I don't know. But they've ramped right up again since he started changing his style a bit. And the one I liked he did was the hammock hot tent by One Tigress. They're actually sending me the newer version of that when that comes out. So I'm keen to test that. But yeah, he did one, it was all One Tigress gear. So they, they obviously sent it to him, which they do. <laughs> Oops. Um, that's how they get their gear tested. And he had in there a hammock, but he, I think he used a cot. No, Bruce. I think he used a cot. That was a good video. I like that. I like that style of testing out real gear because we can't all go out there and just build all these elaborate systems using tons and tons of knots and things like that. You know, we're not all keen on doing that. I, I've done a little bit of it and eh, it's not for me. Also in New Zealand where I am, there's just not that much you can chop down. It really isn't. That's dead. It's got to be dead. And everything is so healthy here that hardly anything dies. And we don't get real winters here where there are forests, so the trees don't die. Right, I'm gonna finish the rest of my coffee and come back to you when I'm putting all this gear away. And if anyone feels like popping over here and helping me do this, then please do so. Because he's absolutely useless. He will not help me at all. All right, catch you in a bit, everybody. Okay, everyone, all packed up. Now, just got to get the tarp and the tent down. Um, what I might do is just to make it easier to get to the tent because it stopped raining. So I'm going to take the tarp down first, um, get it all packed up, put away. So I'm going to go through this fast forward, like Star Trek, warp speed. Oh, well, that was painless. So I've got six guys set up in the corners. Ridge lines or ropes or whatever you want to call them. These worked brilliantly. I would definitely recommend that. So you saw I stuffed the tent didn't bother folding it because I've got to take it all out and dry it anyway. So there's no point. And I'm on the quad bike, so it's not a big deal. These things work brilliantly. Okay, when they're wet, if you've pulled it too tight, they're a bit tricky to loosen again. But they're better than having to deal with knots, trust me. Just unhooking carabiners and hooking them over each other is so much easier. And pulling these tight is so much easier than having to do knots. And these hold really, really well. You probably saw I had to stuff the poles in the side. Again, there's no no pole bag, go figure. Don't know what they were thinking. 
Right, let's get all this in the big orange bag. Oh, it's so much easier having a quad bike and just chucking everything in like this. It's all wet, so it's all gonna come out again and be dried. But this waterproof pack, 100 liter pack, very good. Not that it needs to be waterproof now. <laughs> and I'll put a description to it. But the brand, I can't even see what the brand is. Oh, it says Unplug. Unplug, easy outdoor adventure. Found it on Amazon. Yeah, I'll put a link on there. All right, Brucey, we're going home. Come on. Hey. So he will jump in the back. Uh, oh no, he wants to run home. Brucey, come back here. Come back. Come and say goodbye. Come on. So he's going to run all the way home. He, he wants the exercise, I guess. Come on, come here. Come up here. Come and say goodbye to everyone. All right, look, thanks for coming, everybody. If you like the video, hey, come up here. Hey. If you like the video, please click, give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe, it really helps. Um, just double check that you are subscribed. Turn on the notifications so that you know when the next video is coming out. Um, it's been great. I enjoyed this, even though I couldn't get up onto the mountain. Uh, Bruce has had a good time. I've had a great time. I love the spot in the trees here. It's a shame I can't have a fire, but it was all good. The tent, well, you saw my review of it. It's okay. It has its purposes, but uh, it is what it is. So thanks again, everyone, for coming. I might give you a little clip of me driving back on the camera, just so you can see what it looks like as I go down through the, the pines. It's a bit hair raising because we're quite steep. Uh, so don't miss that. But again, thanks for coming everybody. Catch you next time. Okay, go on then. Let's go home. Come on, Bruce, let's go home. Oh yeah, here we go. This is where I camped. Come on, Bruce. Steep down here. Very steep. It's it's steep. <laughs> so this quad bike has engine braking assist, four-wheel drive, engine braking, so I don't have to do anything. It does it all by itself. Pretty handy. It's a Polaris 550. 550cc. See how high up I am. Going a long way down. Go, Brucey. Go, 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 go. He's been up here so many times. So as long as I don't hit the accelerator, the engine will break all the way down. I don't need to hit the brakes myself. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to film this. All right, you get the idea. I was high up. Okay, thanks again, everybody, for coming. Hope you enjoyed it. Brucey enjoyed it. Brucey, thanks you for coming. Ah, oh, trees, it's soaking wet. He's gone. All right, everybody. Great to have you along on this one. Cheers for coming. See you next time. Bye. Brucey, come here. Say bye, everybody. Come here, come on. Bye, Brucey.